Hi, this is Jake Bray with TaxSaleSupport.com. I'm here with Stephen Swenson, and this is the fourth episode of the Tax Sale Titans podcast. Yeah, yeah. These come out each Tuesday morning, and each week we're going to go over different topics and talk about and review different types of property. Yeah, so um, they've been a lot of fun for us so far. Um, we're happy to be doing them. So first, uh, let's first give thanks, I think, to all of our website members um, and YouTube members. And uh, you know, we've just got a lot of people that follow us, and uh, really, you mean everything to us. Um, you know, it's important for us, and we feel like we help you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We appreciate all our subscribers, even the people that are watching us. We appreciate all of you uh, that are taking your time to learn a little bit more about tax liens and deeds and, and checking out our videos to do it. Yeah. Now... As far as the lineup here, what we're going to be discussing here over the episode. Uh, first, we're going to talk about some news and updates. Uh, we're going to cover our training tip of the week. Uh, next, we're going to cover a uh, deal of the week. You know, we're going to look at some uh, some deals, and then we're going to cover uh, the what were they thinking section, along with a uh, good deal reviewed or member deal reviewed, and that'll, that'll be followed up uh, the, with the ending of it with the questions answered. Yeah, so we've got a lot of good topics to go over. Uh, a lot of good information. Uh, if you're if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and follow us. It's free to join. We also want to give a shout out to all of uh, the uh, positive comments uh, that we get on YouTube and social media. We appreciate it, uh, Johnny and and everyone. You know, one question somebody had is they love the information regarding the recording quality of their feedback. We understand that. Uh, and it's actually something we're, we're going to be improving. In fact, uh, we, we'll be moving into a studio soon uh, that we're creating to be able to even have better quality sound and audio video. Yeah, so we are. We're looking forward to uh, just improving the quality on this and making the show bigger and better. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, in terms of news and events, let's first talk events because we have a lot of events coming up here soon. Uh, we're going to be in um, in San Francisco uh, on November 4th through the 6th. Uh, then we're going to be in Florida, Fort Lauderdale area, the 11th through the 13th, and Philadelphia, uh, 18th through the 20th. We also have two events in December, uh, which is uh, Phoenix, the 2nd through the 4th, in Austin, Texas, 9th through the 11th. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Also, we're going to have on December 1st our Thursday night webinar. That's a webinar me and Shay do live. It's free. Uh, to join. We go over a different topic uh, each each training. So if you're interested, go ahead and go to any of our websites. You can click the link in the descriptions. We're also going to be scheduling a one-day online workshop coming up soon. What the one-day workshop is, is it's a condensed version of our three-day workshop. So there's a lot of people that can't come out in person, spend three days with us. And so we have this one-day workshop. Of course, we can't go over everything we can over three days, but we try to go over some of the important information and help people that are interested in getting started with tax lien investing help you jump start it. Yeah, you bet. Now, for the training tip of the week, uh, you know, the question that we want to answer this week is, um, you know, what is a tax lien and how do they work? Yeah, definitely, definitely. So let's first talk about what a lien is. Well, a lien is a legal claim that's placed against a property for unpaid compensation. In, in the case of property taxes, it's it's on property taxes. Yeah, unpaid property taxes. And really, what the lien does is it prevents the transfer of ownership. That means you, know, you can't sell the property, you can't refinance the property, you can't really do anything that's going to change anything to do with the ownership while that lien is there. And so, uh, you know, the lien basically is placed on the deed for the amount of the, you know, unpaid taxes. So, you know, if you didn't pay $1,500, it's a $1,500 lien they place against your property. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, and when it comes to tax liens, the the advantage to investor, the reason investors invest into them is because they make guaranteed returns. In fact, as we look in here, uh, these are some taxing certificates that were purchased by some of our members in over-the-counter opportunities where the sale had already taken place. They were able to look through uh, the the uh, the over-the-counter list with some of our coaches, pick out some properties, and purchase some liens. Yeah, and because you know it was after that they made that full fourteen percent interest rate. Yeah, well, and we can see these liens here. You know, they're they're not huge dollar liens. These are six hundred and twenty dollars up to around thirteen hundred dollars. Uh, the properties don't have a huge, uh, you know, they're not ex real expensive homes as well. They're, you know, fifty sixty thousand dollar type homes. Mm -hmm. But that's a small amount on this type of property. Chances are 
these are going to pay off, but these are also castings that are over the counter, meaning that they're purchased further into the redemption period, and means that you're going to increase your chances of actually maybe owning one. Yeah, I mean, really, one thing to keep in mind is that tax liens are meant to pay off. You know, um, it, really, it's a great system designed to give us a little bit more time, you know, with our property taxes. Um, but, you know, paying them off, though, is really what's supposed to happen. Um, it's it's a little bit more unusual when it does lead to foreclosure, but it does happen, and that has to be a necessary part of the system. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about the history of tax liens. Believe it or not, tax liens have been around since the 1800s. Uh, it's, it's been in place for a long time. In fact, it even really goes back in some ways, tax sales, property taxes, and people that don't pay those property taxes, losing those all the way to Roman times. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, really, um, it is probably the, the oldest tax. But um, in terms of the United States, you know, we can go back and look into the, uh, the 1800s and, and find, um, find liens. Uh, they've always been, um, you know, a good method that, you know, that local governments can use to be able to collect the money faster. Well, really, until the 1900s, they were the primary method of taxation. Uh, you know, the counties need these money for roads, schools, all of the public services. In fact, me and Shade were looking through an old book that was from the 1870s today in San Francisco where they were posting all of their tax sales and all the delinquent properties that were in there. And even there, they, you know, that it, these, these funds were going and mentioned in there that these are going to pay for these type of services. In fact, right here on the left-hand side is a tax lien. Uh, me and Shade, uh, you know, collect uh, some old tax sale certificates, old tax deeds. This is a tax lien certificate from 1939 uh, that was purchased in Florida. And you can see that this particular tax lien uh, was uh, purchased for $10.50, and it was earning at this time, back in 1939, a 1% interest per, per month. So a 12% interest overall, but here's 1939 taxing certificate. Yeah, interesting. Um, so a couple things that are important to note about tax liens. First off, they're sold on an annual basis or, or a yearly basis. Okay, so um, it generally happens once a year, and it's usually the treasurer or tax collector uh, that is overseeing that part of the sale, or you know, uh, that, that basically oversees the, uh, the 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 tax sale every year. Yeah, well, and when it comes to tax liens, they're a first position lien which means that, that they need to be paid before anything, before a mortgage, before anything gets paid. You really can't even sell the property, refinance the property without paying off that tax lien. Yeah, well, basically, it also means you know, that they take priority or precedence over, over other liens or claims. And so even something uh, like that, being a first position lien, it also gives you foreclosure power if it's not paid. Yeah, well, and when it comes to the interest rate return, the redemption period, the bidding type or bidding method, that's all going to be dictated by state law. So the state will decide uh, what those records were. In fact, me and Shane were even joking about that today, that the language that we see in today's tax sale uh, lists, but not only the list and information from the county, but also the state code, is, is pretty much in some ways word for word from the code that we were looking back in 18. 76 yeah. or 18, yeah. you know, they 69 were, or whatever. You know, in many cases, they were using the same bits of state law, you know, to uh, to determine and to figure it out. So, yeah, now, tax sale auctions can be uh, on site, which, you know, they, they've uh, they've been in person, you know, for many years, but also now online and um, and over the counter in some cases, too. Yeah. Now, when it comes to, to purchasing a lien, uh, really one or two scenarios are going to occur. Yeah, it's the simplicity of liens. It's one of the reasons that, you know, that... Um, financial institutions were drawn to them because it really what it comes down to is you're either going you know they're going to pay the delinquent taxes that they owe or they don't um, and most of the time they do yeah so in, in scenario one which shade said most of the time this is going to happen the owner is going to pay back those delinquent taxes and penalties and at that point the county is going to go ahead and cut a check or in some case that could be direct deposit and the investor is going to earn their money back plus an interest rate return that was guaranteed depending on how long they had owned that tax lien certificate. Yeah, so it's a very simple investment in that, you know, for the most part, you're basically just buying it and then uh, you can sit back and get checks in the mail with your return included. Yeah, in fact, here's an example of a tax lien that, that uh, me and Shade, this is one that I purchased, but me and Shade attended this auction, I think it was back in 2005 in a Wyoming tax lien sale. Uh, you can see, check in the mail back then, uh, so, you know, there's always an opportunity, like there was 
100 years ago like there was back in 2005 when we bought this tax lien and like there is today. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, um, you know, this is a great little, um, just little success story from one of our from one of our members, but it was about tax liens. You know, they were basically saying, hey, you know, thanks, uh, you know, my husband and I purchased our first two tax liens. We bought the first uh, for forty three hundred, and actually just redeemed. We received a check in the mail for forty seven fifty, uh, you know, with a profit of four hundred and fifty dollars. You know, we're very excited about to be doing this. It actually works, and it's a safe investment. You know, it's so important to go through the process and to see and understand that. You know, to realize, hey, you know, it does work. You're going to get, you know, earn your interest rate return. There's nothing to worry about. Yeah, this is what's going to happen most of the time. Just like Randy, uh, Randy and Kathy, they're going to get checks in the mail or direct deposit. You're going to get back your money. Then you can put that money back into into more investments. Scenario number two is the owner doesn't pay, and in that case that the uh, at the end of the redemption period that lien holder can go ahead and foreclose on the property and essentially become the new property owner yeah yeah and really it is going to end up one way or the other i mean you're either going to get uh, the lien redeemed by the taxes being paid off or you'll get foreclosure rights on the property yeah in fact here are a couple examples of taxing certificates that were foreclosed on and the lien holder became the the property owner now these these aren't the kind of properties you can acquire all the time through taxing certificates, but both of these are true examples of taxing certificates that were foreclosed on and the, the lien holder was able to acquire the deed. Yeah, in fact, um, yeah, it, when you do acquire a property through a tax lien, you are picking it up for the absolute cheapest way that you could buy, even cheaper than you could get it from the tax deed auction in most cases because uh, you know, you're basically just paying the delinquent taxes for those years, you know, in the foreclosure process. But outside of that, you know, that's it. So that property could just be a tiny fraction of percentage, you know, in terms of value. Yeah, well, you can see the top property, they had delinquent tax lien around just under 10 grand. You know, properties value just under 30. There was probably an additional two to five grand in foreclosure fees, attorney fees to go through the foreclosure. You know, same as the property on the bottom had delinquent taxes of just under thirty grand, had a, a value of around uh, six hundred and fifty, and in that property again there was probably between two to five grand in attorney fees in doing the foreclosure. But that's really where you hear buying property for pennies on the dollar. Uh, this is where that really can come into place because even like Shade said, even like at a deed sale, that's going to be you know. Uh, is going to be bid up at auction, especially if it's a good property. So you're not always going to get them at just the back taxes. In the taxing certificate, you will. Yeah, yeah, definitely not where you're going to get in every tax lien, but you always have a chance to foreclose on property with tax liens. You know, so um, yeah, I think tax liens are definitely a great investment. Uh, you know, they are highly secure. Um, they're not, you know, they're not short term. I mean, sometimes they can be. You know, redemptions can happen at any time but it's not something you have control over. So, uh, you know, you, you try to wait out or plan on that redemption period as kind of being, you know, the duration of the investment potentially. Yeah, for sure. Well, when we're talking about tax liens, the property is acting as collateral for the debt that we pay or, you know, the, the essentially the loan that we're giving to the county. After that redemption period is passed, we can start the, the foreclosure right. And these funds really go to pay for most of the, the, the services that we actually use. When we're talking about school, talking about police, talking about fire department, talking about roads, most of that isn't coming from, you know, some of it in some cases could come from state and, and federal government. Most of that's coming from property taxes. And so essentially this has been a, a system that's been in place for, you know, hundreds of years. Oh well, yeah, and, and this idea that somehow it's, it's predatory is ridiculous. Um, you know, I think most people that think like that have never been to tax sales and don't really know a lot about how they work. Um, it's the tax sale is is an absolutely necessary part of the system in order to make it work. You know, um, you know, and the county needs it. You know, that's the other side of it is that the county needs to have tax sales that work well so that they have a way to get funding when they need it. Um, and you know, and if they didn't have the tax sale, you know, they really wouldn't have that whole enforcement mechanism in place. Yeah, for sure. Well, in, in this tip, you know, we weren't able to get into all of the details with taxing certificates. There's still a lot of information that, that we teach. If you're interested in learning more, go ahead and check out our membership program at taxselfsupport.com. Uh, we do weekly webinars where we go into something like taxing certificates. 
or even over-the-counter tax liens in, in an entire webinar where we can really break it down in, in a full setting. Yeah. And in fact, yeah, you're welcome to uh, to join us. It's only $39 a month. You can basically cancel any time. It's only $29 a month if, uh, if you do a, a year-long membership. Yeah, we also have our YouTube membership program. Bronze membership starts at $2.99 a month. You're welcome to check that out. And gold membership actually includes a membership to tax sale support. So if you're interested in learning more, you can check out uh, either one of those options. All right, now for um, for the deal of the week here, um, we are going to go and check out some tax liens that are uh, are actually scheduled to uh, to be auctioned here uh, in a couple weeks or yeah, a couple weeks. Yeah, yeah, well, not really November 9th, so it's really coming up pretty quickly. This is an auction happening in Denver County, Colorado. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go online and review some of these tax lien certificates. In fact, looking at a tax lien auction works really good with what the topic that we just talked about. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the website. Uh, in fact, we're in the process of rebuilding it now, so it's, it's probably over the next month or two, it's going to look a lot, lot different. But it's going to be the same format. We're going to go to the online auction area. This is where all the online auctions are taking place. We could also go to our auction calendar, but here this just makes it a little easier because we know where to go. We're going to go ahead and go down to Colorado. We're going to see uh, Denver City there, Denver County. We'll go ahead and click on that. It's going to pull up the auction for us, <clears throat> and we're going to go ahead and click on uh, Preview Items to Sell uh, to see the whole list. We could click on the bidding rules and, and some of the information over on the left hand if we were going to go through registered for it. Yeah, so. Uh... Now we can see here there are 82 pages or about 4,000 different tax liens here. Um, now let's see here. We can actually look at, at several of these. Yeah. And so we can see, you know, as far as this tax lien list, it's going to start out in sequence number. It's just going to start with the first one. Up in the top, you can check by face amount. As you log into it, there's some additional search features. Um, but really, we're just going to look at a few um, um, tax and certificates. We'll start with uh, this first one here at $875. And really, we could, me and Shade were trying to go through before doing this and trying to find a bad tax. Yeah, we, we were trying to find example. bad liens. This is kind of a weird auction in that um, there are a whole bunch of partial liens in this sale uh, where the, the, basically the lien amount is, is not reflective of value at all. Um, you know, so whatever the amount you see there, just forget about that somehow, uh, you know, being related to what the property's value is because it's just not. Um, you know, these are partial liens where they only represent a portion of, of, you know, the property's value. So most of these are actually in single family homes. Yeah, and how that might happen is, is you know, the, their tax bill the year before was $1,400. They may assume it had been fourteen hundred dollars the same sent in a check, and it was actually an extra you know uh, one hundred and fifty bucks or something like that. As we look on this, we can see uh, quite some information on it. Now you see uh, the owner name here, and they kind of got the uh, the overhead here. You look on that street view. Yeah, so you can see it's like um, probably like oh, a condo yeah, or apartment unit. Let's go ahead and let's check out the property real quick. And this is kind of what we would do if we we're interested in it. We're going to check out the property, the address. We're going to check it on Google. You know, we'll also check it on Zillow. We can see it's some type of condo. You know, we can check the assessed value and find out a little bit more about it. Um, but when it comes to taxing certificates, if we're not doing a premium bid, where we're bidding up the price a lot, we're just bidding down interest rate or bidding up, uh, you know, a, a non-aggressive premium bid, then really just going through and doing some basic due diligence is usually going to be good enough for us. So it looks like it's a pretty good property. Yeah, it, fairly new construction, probably built in the last 10 years. Um, and, oh, let's see, we might even have... Oh, yeah, we do have... We should, we should have a screen image right here in front of us. It's one of these. Yeah. In fact, let's grab that address and let's see, you know, what the property is valued on on Zillow. Now let's take a look here. And by the way, Zillow, uh, we also use Redfin. Um, you know, in fact, sometimes we'll. we'll oh, it's actually D. 
So, you know, one thing that's interesting is we can see it's valued at 347000 But one thing we always check, Zillow, Redfin, all of these, is because if it's sold and they list it on Zillow, we can see on-site uh, or interior photos in some cases. Now, that doesn't mean that it's like that today. It could be totally different today. You know, there could have been a lot of damage. But at least it gives us an idea of what the layout is. And we can see when this property was sold or listed for sale. And it tells us, okay, two years ago, three years ago, five years ago, this is what the property looked like at that time. Yeah. Yeah, well, and we can get other details, too. They're just nice. Um, mm -hmm. You know, yeah, there's a lot of information there. Um, but essentially, though, for $800, that is an insane tax lien because... Yeah, I mean, eight hundred and seventy-five dollars versus uh, versus the value there, three hundred and forty-seven thousand. Mm -hmm. You know, your money is so highly secured there that, you know, of course, that the, the property is going to most likely just redeem, uh, you know, as they usually do because you know it has so much value there. So, you know, that eight hundred dollars is such a tiny fraction of its value. Well, it's not a huge property. We're talking about a two bedroom, two and a half bath, twelve hundred square feet, but its renting estimate of, of twenty one hundred a month. You know, has estimated around three hundred and fifty thousand. Um, let's go ahead and check out our next the next property. Let's check out number twenty down the list. And this one's only for one hundred and seventy two dollars. So again, like you know, fairly small amount for tax liens. That's a very you know small amount really. And what we would usually expect it to be on is some type of. Uh, maybe a lot. Yeah, something with low value. Yeah, well, it, it, you know, it may may have. Yeah, exactly. Something that has a lower value may or may not be usable. You know, sometimes you can find those hundred, two hundred, three hundred dollar liens that are on something usable. If we look at the assessed value there, what does it show? It shows an assessed value of four hundred and two thousand. So this is what you know. Shane was talking about the partial lien earlier. Let's look at that property map real quick. I guess you should have looked it up when you had already pulled it out the first time. But you can see that street view from there and get an idea. Yeah, and you can see it's a nice house. Yeah, a nice single-family home. Well, and you can see up there at the top where it says neighborhood sales. We're not going to be worried about this for, for looking up lien purposes. But if we were doing deeds, you know, we, would, we could use that to pull up, uh, you know, comparable market, comparable properties that we could use in doing a comparative market analysis. Yeah. Yeah, that would, you know, so, you know, here right there it shows us the sales. You know, we can see the square footage, and you know, you probably set how far away, you know, or if it's for a certain neighborhood, it's got to be something close. Yeah. But yeah, easy way to find a lot of comps, um, and again, you know, you've got a property that is worth a ton, you know, and a tiny little lien. So here's the property right here. Is that a golf course or what was it? Yeah, it, yeah, it is a golf course. You know, let's grab that address and see what it's valued at on the inside of it. So again, like one hundred and seventy dollars is a laughable amount for a lien against this property because the lien is utilizing the whole property for collateral. You know, so uh, you know, even though it's a hundred and seventy dollar lien, it has foreclosure power if it wasn't paid off. But you know, it's going to get paid off. Yeah, nobody's going to let this property go for $172. But you can see, this isn't really somebody who, uh, you know, uh, this uh, most likely is a mistake. Mm -hmm. You know, it was somebody who... who Thinks their taxes are paid. Yeah, and, and, and maybe got the notice, haven't done anything about it. You know, once they find out, you know, after their taxing is sold, the county will send them another notice. Maybe they're trying to sell it. Yeah, I mean, you it's know. a five hundred thousand, five hundred and seventy-one thousand dollar property. You know, with a hundred and seventy dollar lien is crazy. well, and, and with a hundred seventy dollar lien, it means that they paid everything but a hundred and seventy. Yeah. So it was probably a couple of thousand, or you know, or fifteen hundred, two grand, twenty five something, and they didn't pay you know all of it. Yeah, yeah, that's insane though to have that kind of a bid to value ratio. Yeah, let's go ahead and look at number twenty seven down. And we really could look at any one. I just kind of picked out a few yeah, of them. Yeah, they really are all of them. I mean, all of the inexpensive ones were against homes. Uh, you know, so, which is just amazing. Yeah, we couldn't, we, you know, we try to see if we could find a couple of bad examples to point out to you. And a lot of times in lean sales, you, you can. What they probably did, and I'm sure we can find some junk lots here somewhere. 
But what they probably did is, is, is the city was laid out pretty well. You know, I'm not sure about that, but usually if you see this, you know, it was laid out pretty where there's not a well and there's not a bunch of junk land. Or you know, what's interesting about these is we're looking at, you know, three different land amounts, you know, that are quite different on, on properties that are, uh, you know, that are quite different. But, uh, yeah, you can see that this is a lien for 1800 right? And it's in the same neighborhood, mm -hmm. you know, as the other two. Uh, and you know, it probably has a very similar value, you know, to, to the other two, but it has more owed in taxes because it might be more of like the, uh, you know, more, it more it might be more like an entire year's worth of taxes or, or part of a quarter, yeah, like a half, year. half year, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that's probably right. You know, because sometimes a lot of times they'll have you pay in quarters or once a year or something. Yeah, I mean, you know, five hundred thousand. So that's a little bit more like a normal lien, but still five hundred thousand versus an eighteen hundred dollar lien, highly secure. Yeah, good property, good value. Uh, obviously, all of these would be you know great tax liens to purchase, and I'm sure that you know uh, it'll probably get somewhat competitive because they are good tax liens. Yeah. All right, what next? Let's go ahead and check out number 42. So for $3,901. I was just trying to look at some of the different price ranges. You know, I mean, really all the properties are the same. They're all yeah. worth between 350 and 600 grand, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it really is true that they are pretty much all very identical. Uh, let's pull the map. This one's probably similar. Yeah, yeah, this one is going to be so. I started here. going through and looking at the fifty, sixty, seventy dollar liens, trying to find, you know, something, and they were just all partial liens. Yeah, this one is another one that is, you know, that is a house probably similar value. Yeah, I believe so. Same neighborhood, you know, so probably a very similar value. Well, and it's probably it's probably because those first liens are all properties within this area. Then they're going to move on to another area. So it's possible if we were to go into page, you know, 30 or something like that, we're going to get into an area where there is some junk liens. And that may be right, the reason why we've seen so many good liens is because it's in a, in a newer neighborhood that was well established. Yeah. No junk land. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. There's literally we've not I seen. Mean, look at look at the lot lot layout. Yeah, it perfectly. is it is really well designed here, where you don't have a lot of leftover pieces of land. Yeah, you, know, you can see they have no leftovers there with the way they've got it divided. Yeah, so you know that's probably the reason why if we were to go to a different section, maybe we could we could find you know some more of those junk liens, but. Definitely on the first page, they all seem to be pretty, pretty good properties. Well, and even on the craziest one we could find, you know, it was a, it's a four thousand dollar lien on a property that's still valued over five hundred thousand. So the bid to value ratio is still under one percent on it. Yeah, you know, it's just crazy. You know, let's do one more thing before we jump uh, off. Let's go ahead and let's check out, you know, uh, one of the most or the most expensive lien. That's something we kind of like to do, me and Shaden like to see the cheapest liens, some of the most expensive ones. Let's go ahead and check out this, the very most expensive one, and just see what it is. Let's see. And it is, let's grab that. Let's look at it, it says value as well, see if it tells us a little bit about it. So it has, it's a, uh, it's, oh wow, all of the value is in the land. This has like no improvement value really. This is just twelve million dollars in land. Look value. at the map. I didn't notice that before. Maybe we're looking at a different one. Because I saw that structure, I thought it was part of that structure. You know what is that? Let's see. We'll see what kind of building that is. I should have checked it more. Geotech environmental equipment. Um, yeah, I assumed it was that thing. I just saw the twelve million. I thought that was both of it combined. So it was, it's this geotech headquarters place here. There's no way they're valuing the land right there. It's got to include the structure, you'd think. But that's something we got to look into if you were going to spend that kind of money on the lien. Well, yeah, that, that's what's weird is that they only show it there for. Yeah. You know. 
I don't know if they've got it separated or something somehow. I don't know. Let's let's look at the next one. That's definitely got some something weird with it. Uh, and let's see this one. So this one's two hundred and ten thousand. And it looks like this one is against a property here that's valued at nine million. Uh, you know, five million in land, three you know, three point seven in improvements. Yeah, let's go to the property map. We'll see what the overhead looks like. And this is also a, a you know a big place. What is the street view on it? I think they're just showing the front of it. Yeah, yeah. Here we'll pull it up here and see we see the you know the building here. You know, on that last one, I looked at the address thinking it was a building. I didn't see that it was just land value. Yeah, so this is... Oh, I think it's, it's the a, YMCA. Yeah, I was going to say that. The YMCA's up there. Yeah, that's what it is. It's, it's, uh, it's the YMCA. Hopefully, I get that paid. Yeah. Let's try looking at one more. Uh, let's see, for two hundred and seven thousand. Let's see what this one is. It built in nineteen sixty six. Says value there. Nine thousand. This is probably going to be another similar. Type. Oh yeah, this is men's Christian. This is a, is this a big church. These are kind of interesting. Yeah, that's two charities. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I wonder oh, why... Oh, that's part of the YMCA as well. You know, I wonder why... Oh, I guess they're just kind of interesting that they're paying that high property taxes. you think they'd be getting some kind of break. Yeah, they, well, yeah, there's, there's a lot. But between something. those two, you've got $400,000 in plus some property taxes right there. Well, I bet some of these ones that are a little bit lower will get into more commercial type property. But those, it's interesting because, you know, that was, you would think that some of that would be exempt. But I don't know too much about that. Yeah, even this one at 100000 is also industrial meeting hall. Let's see what that looks like. Well, this might be, this one almost looks, uh, you know, look at that temple, LC. Yeah. Yeah, let's see if it is some kind of some kind of church. It looks more like a more like an office building. Let's see. You know, I, I think you still have to pay property tax, but I thought you got some kind of discount or something. Oh, that's it. It's this big building. Wow. Yeah. Looks pretty grand. Looks old. Yeah, so that one's the one with the hundred thousand dollar lien against it. You know, but it says it's worth you know nine million. Well, and it looks like almost it almost looks like it was built. Uh, you know, it actually said that um, uh, nineteen oh six. Yeah, I mean, look at that. I mean, it looks yeah, quite old. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. So you know, that's that's uh, some Colorado tax liens. Uh, there's quite a few different counties that are holding them on uh, several different online auction uh, companies. So there's opportunity, and I think they're even doing, and we pulled up some uh, for our listing service, some uh, live on-site auctions that are happening as well. So interesting uh, Colorado Texans. Yeah, now for uh, the next section, let's get into a what were they thinking or bad deals reviewed. Um, you know, this is an interesting property uh, that uh, Steve actually found this one, and I think it's 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 pretty odd, and somebody did pay quite a bit for it. Yeah, in fact, a couple weeks ago we did a uh, deal of the week on the Los Angeles tax sale, and we looked at some upcoming properties, reviewed them. Uh, I was going through today, and actually was noticing that there was quite a few properties that didn't sell. You know, nobody bid it on. Um, but there was this property here, and there's a lot of red flags. Now, I'm not saying that you can't do anything with this, but, you know, we wouldn't have spent our money on this, and, and we'll explain to you why. First of all, uh, it ended up selling for... So it opened up for $37,000. Mm -hmm. 
um, it had an assessed value of sixty nine thousand, sold for one hundred and two thousand, um, almost one hundred and three thousand. Um, and some of the main issues we would have first off is is this even buildable? You know, um, is it usable? Um, you know, does it meet the requirements? It doesn't look like it has you know much frontage. Yeah, well, you know, this if we're talking about location, this is location. We're talking about Beverly Hills here. You know, this is in a prime location. In fact, the homes in this area are valued at the very low end for a tiny home, three million up to 10, 12 million, just within the homes right surrounding it. So we're talking about a serious home, but like Shade said, you know, if we're looking at the actual street frontage, and if we're looking at the map there, we can see that there's a small narrow, uh, small, you know, uh, access point there where there's some type of legal access. Mm -hmm. But the problem with that First is, is it legal to be able to do that? Because in a lot of areas, you need to have a certain amount of street frontage to be able to build a home on the property. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the other issue that we start to look at with this property that is an extreme issue are um, some of the topographical concerns. You know, you'd have you know, concerns about the terrain. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's where you can kind of see exactly where the property is located at. Yeah, in fact, uh, you know, we went ahead and pulled up the, the online map a lot of these maps will have topographical maps that we can use. We went ahead and pulled up the first one where it was 10 feet of elevation per line. Yeah, yeah, 10 feet of elevation change per line. Yeah, and, and it, looking at it, I was like, my goodness, this looks like 160, 180 foot drop in elevation. So I wanted to check that out. So I went to a different map from the uh, LA County Engineering Engineer Department to go ahead and check that. And that ended up being the same as the 10 feet. You know, ended up being around 160 to 180 foot drop in elevation. So from there, you know, what was interesting, and this is something me and Shade will do, is if we have a lot like this or a property, we'll go look online at some of the homes that are surrounding the property to see if we can get a view of the property. And so if we're actually looking at this property, this, this mansion property here that's down on the lower hand side, that's actually the mansion that we're looking at below. Yeah, right there. Yeah, and so between those two homes where that arrow is pointing at on the left-hand picture, that's actually where the the lot is located. So, you know, to us, I don't know how you're going to build on that home. First of all, I don't know if it's legal to build on it. Yeah. Second question is if it is legal, how are you going to build on it? You know, you're talking about a huge drop in elevation. And, and and then I went and looked at another photo from another house, and you can get the idea on that top photo of the elevation change there. You know, looking up at the house above. Yeah, I mean, it, it's impossible. That and and they they don't even have like a level place to start. You know, it's all downhill because basically as soon as they get past that, you know, that little entry there, it's all drop. Yeah, well, and and where those homes are at, that's the only section of flat. You know, that's where. Where, where, where the kind of that home is on the side of the street, there's about a 30 or 40, you know, uh, foot section there. Uh, well, maybe at maybe 50 or 60 feet in total where it's, it's pretty flat, you know, and then it drops straight off on that cliff. And so if somebody spent $100,000 for this, yes, you're buying land in Beverly Hills. Yes, you're buying land that's around properties that are valued 3 to $12 million. But can you use it and who are you going to sell it to? You've limited who you could possibly ever, who would ever be interested in buying it would be one of the possible neighbors. And the only reason they would be interested in buying it, I could think of, would be just privacy or just to yeah. give themselves some separation. Yeah, just to just extend their yard a little bit, you know, with a lot that, you know, and to make sure that it never But is it worth it to pay a hundred grand for it? I no, don't know. I don't think it's worth it to yeah. do thirty grand because it there's no possible use for it that I can see. Now, maybe maybe we're wrong. We're just looking at this from kind of a bird's eye view. But from it, what we can see, you know, somebody lost a hundred thousand dollars here. It, well, it's probably why the property went to the tax on the first for place. For sure, is because Absolutely. you know the person decided it's not usable, and they're you know they, they're saying it's valued at you know seventy thousand, so I can pay all these property taxes on. I'm just gonna let it go. In fact, I bet if we look into the to the to the to the property records. In fact, if we were even interested in looking at this property, that would be one of the first things we'd do is we'd look to see who the past owner was. Because if that owner is is Mr. is the mansion property down there below, mm -hmm. you know, then 
they might have just went ahead and they bought had that property when they bought it and they just let it go because they don't want to have to pay an extra you know uh, five thousand dollars or three thousand dollars or whatever the property taxes in a year on a property that has no use yeah yeah that's probably what happened uh, so uh, yeah be careful when you're bidding on properties we don't want to see anybody lose money on deals and there are certainly plenty of properties out there that just cycle through these counties and that you can lose money on so man yeah, so let's get that bad taste out of our mouth and, and let's talk about you know good deals reviewed let's review a couple of uh, deals or one, uh, really kind of a bunch of deals by uh, a group of our students uh, jim and drew yeah which um you know these were some of our early coaching students uh, you know they had a lot of success. You know, let's just read through what they said because that's probably the most convincing thing. They said, you know, um, they said, you know, we've now purchased twelve lots for twelve thousand dollars in value, uh, at one hundred and twenty-five thousand um, dollars in the state she recommended. We sold three lots much quicker than anticipated. Um, you know, we had no idea how much demand is created when you sell a property with, with owner financing. We've now purchased real estate value at two hundred ninety-three thousand for only seventeen thousand two fifty-eight. You know, this would not have been possible without your help and assistance. Um, which that's a that's a powerful statement there. You know, they were able to pick up that much property. And you look at some of the deals, and these are great properties they're picking up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If we look at the top right hand corner, they picked up that lot there for five hundred bucks, five hundred and three valued at eight. Uh, you know, down there below a nice building lot, corner lot. Uh, you know, the last one was in the subdivision, they picked up for eighteen hundred had a, a value of 1500 and when I have these values here I just pulled this information off the assessed value yeah so the market value is, is most likely going to be higher than the assessed value I'm just pulling it off of the records of, that we had of the mark of the assessed value oh really in all of these it seems like they're paying around 10 percent you know or uh, or less than a lot of these yeah and taking a really opportunity opportunity based approach uh, you know pay 2400 value to 25. Uh, you know that that one uh, on the the middle bottom uh, there that paid eight hundred and forty five for twelve grand. That was a really good deal. Yeah, it's lot. just an awesome lot that they paid very little for. That has a ton of usability. You know, um, and and you know is a desirable property. Yeah, and the last one two thousand for a lot that was had an assessed value of sixteen. Uh, 648 probably easily has a market value of over 20 grand yeah yeah so in all those cases I'm very easy to sell those properties too you know when you're only into them about 10 percent you know you've got a lot of options for seller financing well if we take how much value they almost have you know let's just round up the numbers and say thirty three hundred thousand dollars worth of real estate for 20 grand mm -hmm. you know that's that's purchasing it for you know uh, less than 10 cents on the dollar yeah you know now they took an opportunity based approach you're not always going to be you know be able to get these kind of deals in every auction but there is that opportunity out there to make a ton of money and they started out with land and they've actually moved on to structured properties and are doing other kind of deals as well yeah it's awesome uh, now if you haven't uh, been to secrets of tax lien investing.com to download our free ebook uh, it's definitely something you should go and do again it's free it's a, it doesn't cost you anything um, and you can also register there to attend uh, some of the free webinars that we conduct so if we put on a free webinar uh, you know we can send out an email to everybody there and you can attend one of those if you want or access other trainings yeah absolutely just click the link in the description it'll take you to the secrets of tax lien investing page uh, we're actually going to be updating that website as well along with tax sales supports but you can go there right now like shade said you can set up uh we've got the uh the thursday night web webinar happening december 1st with me and shade you're uh, you can attend and you can also of course download the free ebook yeah. uh, now for our uh, final section here we have our questions answered so this is questions uh from uh from youtube subscribers or from also from different platforms we wanted to uh to get all these questions down so um let's cover those first Okay, uh, let's talk to the first one. It's got two questions. Uh, would you do seller financing for a higher priced lot at wholesale or only after a quiet title? The answer to that question really is going to depend on the individual property. Yeah, like what the numbers look like. You certainly could. You know, you could do a seller financing deal, um, you know, if, if it made sense to you to do it. Um, uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with seller financing deals. You don't necessarily have to take properties through, you know, a quiet title in order to, you know, to make a good deal. Yeah. Now, you know, when you're doing something like seller financing, you can ask a higher price than you 
could if it's a cash type deal. And really it's going to be based a little bit upon on what you want to do. Uh, when it comes to if we're going to offer, you know, if we're going to go through quiet title or we're not going to go quiet title if we have somebody that's interested in seller financing, we're really not married to either direction. We're open to either either direction. And really, if you're open to either direction and you already have a buyer, that's probably going to work out best for you in the long run as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, finding the buyer is ultimately our main objective. And so, um, you know, we never want to overlook that. Uh, so let's move on to the second part of the question here. Uh, also, found a nice flat five acre residential plot, but from the top view JS parcel map, it looks like both neighbors built their driveways on this lot. Is that a big red flag? Do you do surveys uh, for wholesale or even after a quiet title to sell? Um, let's go ahead and answer the first part of that question. As far as that five acre residential lot, uh, the neighbor's properties may have an easement that allows them to access the part of the property or they may not and that's really where if we're interested we're going to look into the deed and see is there an easement that allows the neighbor to put it on there or are they encroaching on the property yeah which is that's really the only way that you're going to know um you know whether whether they're just doing that on their own and they you know their driveway is just over too far or whether they actually have a legal right you know to do that because it's you know that's how it's listed in the in the title yeah now would it keep us from buying the property no uh you know if it still had use and if it still had value we're talking about five acres so it's not like there's not enough room to be able to somebody for somebody to be able to build a property on there but it is something we're going to look into and we're going to check the deed to see if there's any type of easements that allow it. That will at least tell us. And then once you purchase the property, you can decide what you want to do. You can contact those property owners and, and let them know they're encroaching on your property. But to find out if they really are, you're probably going to need to get a survey done. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, you know, as far as the overhead map, that's, that's a good indication. But that's not, that's not an exact 100% uh, proof that's where the property lines are. It's very very possible that they may have their, their driveways may be on their own property. That would be determined through the survey, and if, if it's worth doing, that's going to really kind of depend on how much money you probably have into the property. Yeah. Okay. Next question here is: I've come across some tax sell lists that don't include, and by the way, this is from Alex. Um, I've come across some tax sell lists that don't include the minimum bid um, in West Virginia specifically. How do we go about finding the minimum bid amount? Now, that's a good question, and, and we've actually seen this in, in West Virginia ourselves, Alex. Uh, when it comes to this, you're not going to see this all the time, and really, we, there's only two things we can do. The first thing we can do is we can look up the tax collector information uh, on their website and see what back taxes or how much taxes are, are on the records there. Yeah, the tax history will at least tell us, you know, what's been paid, what hasn't been paid, so we can know about uh, what the total tax bill is at, because uh, whether it opens up at that amount or whether they have people bid and then they make you pay that amount in addition to it, you know, either way, you, you know, it's something you're going to need to know. Yeah, well, and, and even that, we're just getting an idea. That's not going to be 100% science that that's going to be what it is, because there may be fees involved. Uh, the second thing that we would do is, is we would just contact the county and ask them. You know, we may need to send them an email, give them a call and say, hey, I'm interested in, in this tax sell list. I see there's no opening bid amount. And, and it may be for a specific reason. In fact, we've seen this before, and the reason there's no minimum bid amount is because they stocked the auction all at $100. You know, and they're just getting rid of the properties, or they're starting at some minimum bid, and it's the highest win. And so, you know, if you do come across that, especially in a place like West Virginia, where I have seen that before, in fact, it's something I've com commonly seen, you're probably going to need to do a, one of those two things and, to see it, uh, how much that is going to open up that. Yeah. All right, next question here from Ralph. Um, what is the difference between a normal tax deed auction and an upset tax deed auction? Thank you very much for the help. Uh, great question, Ralph. When it comes to the upset auction, and, and really, if we're talking about an upset auction, this is only going to apply to Pennsylvania. And Pennsylvania is a little bit different than any other state. They have first what's called an upset auction, an upset tax deed auction. Now, what that is, is that's an auction where they are auctioning off the property, 
but they have not gone through a judicial foreclosure, which means that anything like a lien, judgments, mortgages, anything like that is going to stick to the property. So that's what the upset sell is. If you're buying that property, you're buying it with liens, judgments, mortgages attached. You need you got to research that before you buy it uh, and see what's attached to the property and make sure it's still going to be worth buying. Then what happens from there is they have a judicial sale. Yeah, which um, the judicial sale is the sale that happens um, post foreclosure. You know, after it's been through a judicial foreclosure and those things have been um, have been wiped out. So. Uh, you, you do get that benefit of uh, you know, getting the, uh, you know, the liens wiped out through the foreclosure process, uh, but it's also a different sale, you know, it's a full sale later. You know, I'm sure there are still good deals to be found in the, um, in the upset sale. But yeah, very much a, um, a specific term that, uh, you know, the Pennsylvania uh, you know, state law basically uses and, and, and kind of set up. Um, you know, so there's a few other places around the country that have Things, um, you know, kind of like a high bid up. But for the most part, though, it's just Pennsylvania. Yeah, well, you know, they're going to have that upset sale in the beginning where all of the liens are going to be attached. They're going to go through a judicial sale where it's a judicial foreclosure, eliminates any liens, judgments, mortgages. And then they're going to have what's called a repository sale, which is their terminology for their over the counters. So if the property doesn't sell in the upset sale, doesn't sell in the judicial sale, then it'll be put into a repository where sometimes they'll go ahead and sell those property in, in an auction setting or you can purchase them over the counter. Yeah. Yeah. And all those terms are also unique. This is Pennsylvania. Yeah. So. Another question uh, from Maria. What can happen if there's a mortgage on a tax deed lot in Florida? Uh, you know, when it comes to Florida, regardless if it's a lot, a home, anything like it, that, uh, if there's a mortgage on the property, it is not going to be attached uh, to the property after it's gone through that judicial foreclosure. Yeah, it goes back to what we were talking about with tax liens being first position liens. Um, you know, that really gives them the power to uh, to extinguish or uh, you know, it gives them precedence over any other kind of lien, including something like a mortgage. You know, a mortgage is really just another property owner from the perspective of, you know, the, the state. You know, um, you know, there are different owners there, and the mortgage is one of them, and that's why the mortgage will be one of the, the parties that will receive foreclosure notices, um, you know, when they go out, is, um, is because the county's trying to get them to pay. But ultimately, if they don't pay, then the same thing will happen to them, you know, that happens to any other property owner. They're going to lose their, their property rights to that property, you know, if the foreclosure is complete and they haven't paid. Yeah, so really, you know, that mortgage is no longer, good. the property is no longer going to be collateral for the mortgage. Yeah. You know, the mortgage is still going to exist. They could still try to go after that in previous property owner. Yeah, I mean, there's still a loan there between, you know, between the, you know, the two parties. But, yeah, the property will no longer be collateral for it. Yeah, looks like we have one last question from Chris. You know, what about mineral rights in a foreclosure or tax foreclosure? It's a good, Chris, uh, good question. When it comes to something like mineral rights, it's really going to be state specific, uh, because in some states, you know, those mineral rights will attach to the property as part of the real property. In other states, those mineral rights can be owned by you know a different individual uh, or, or a different party. So you may own the land, and somebody else owns those individual mineral rights. In fact, in some states, we've actually seen them sell mineral rights in a number of different states where they're actually selling those mineral rights in in a tax sale foreclosure yeah yeah we have seen you know we have seen mineral rights you know selling in tax sales before um you not know common but you know we'll probably i think i think i'm not 100 percent sure but i know pennsylvania does i preach i think i've seen nevada before yeah, yeah. Now it could be possible to, um, you know, to, to profit from that, but Colorado you, too. You know, you would need to have uh, some kind of knowledge in, uh, and because we personally don't have any experience with um, with evaluating the value of mineral. Rights. No, no. Yeah, yeah. I can think of, you know, I think Colorado. There's a few different states where occasionally you'll see them come up because those mineral rights, depending on the state, could be prop, could be taxed as real property. So if they're not paying the property taxes on those mineral rights then just like a just like a piece of land that they owned or a home that they owned the county will go ahead and issue a lien on the property and sell those liens so in a number of different states that happens but it's really going to be kind of a state specific question 
uh, you know, depending on those individual states. Yeah. So you're generally going to avoid mineral rights, at least if you're looking at them like liens, you know, you could potentially buy. Um, and, you know, you probably won't deal with them too much outside of that. Yeah, well, in, in, in what, whether they, the property you buy has mineral rights or doesn't will really kind of depend on the state. Yeah. Uh, That's pretty much everything we had to cover here for, uh, for this episode of Tax of Titans, but we appreciate you watching here until the very end. Uh, you know, we definitely want to encourage you to, uh, to you know, if you enjoyed this, comment below, you know, write something you know, about, uh, about it, if you had a favorite part or if you like the properties that we were looking at. And uh, be sure to join us next week. Yeah, definitely. Let us know, you know, uh, if you would have bought the properties, what you thought about, uh, you know, uh, some of these, uh, what were they thinking deals. Uh, comment, subscribe. Uh, we appreciate it. Thanks so much.